Welcome to Fiber Tech, as always, I'm Nick. Today is going to be about this, this lathe, which is in a lot more pieces than last time we saw it. Um, so today is, is part one of a many, many part series. I'm actually not sure how many parts is going to be attending this wood lathe, or formerly a wood lathe, into a functional metal lathe. Um, there's a lot of different resources out there to do this. Um, I just happen to be picking the ones I find useful. Uh, so, today's video in this series is going to primarily be focusing on the powertrain, getting power to the spindle using this motor and all the associated pulleys and everything else, um, and tensioning this up and all that sort of jazz. So the plan at this stage is to use some very oversized O-rings as the drive pulleys, um, because trying to find a V-belt that fits that is pretty much impossible uh, in the small town that I live in, or relatively small town I live in. Um, because the root of that, the bottom of that V-belt is 4 millimeters across, and the top is only 6 millimeters across. So trying to find a V-belt that's of the right length and size and etc. is pretty much an exercise in futility in most parts. So what I'm using instead is some very oversized O-rings, um, which is kind of a cool way of doing things, uh, that are uh, about four, four point, about 3.7 millimeters in diameter and they fit really well and contact really well inside that. So that's how I'm getting power to the spindle. Uh, as you may notice, there's actually two sets of pulleys on this motor. Originally, I was just going to use this one because the way of the belts work and the tension that I have to put on the belt to, jet, to transfer enough power, I am going to have to use this smaller pulley. The problem with this pulley is that it's actually off-center, it's actually sort of bent down or bent a little bit, uh, which I'm going to have to correct uh, today, um, which is something I'll have to do with the dial indicator and everything else. So, without further ado, um, I'm going to get into this, I'm going to probably go to a time-lapse-esque tile thing, uh, and we will get into trying to get this to have power today.
Okay, so we have tension. Um, very basically speaking, all I've done is I've extended the original motor mounted here. So this used to be back here, the much smaller diameter belt. Now that's not gonna work for metal work or pretty much any form of work bigger than the chuck itself because you're gonna, you're gonna basically ch chucking your stuff at your motor and your drive assembly. So what I've done is I've used these two planks to extend the motor mount all the way back and also to provide a little bit of tension against these. I actually have to build up a tensioner later that will probably pull this bottom strand down a little bit and probably pull the top strand down a little bit sort of like this to provide more tension. So pulling both of these down uh, in some way, form or another. Uh, top one needs to be pulled down because it's actually hitting and rubbing with this uh, bell mount or whatever you want to call it, the head, uh, headstock uh, uh, exit point a little bit. So it is, it is rubbing in that regard. Um, the bottom just needs to come down just to actually give it more tension and more engagement surface uh, on everything. So uh, that will be probably at a later date or a later time because we don't actually have the equipment at this point in time to get this up and running. So it's a nice short video today um, because, you know, it's a nice simple thing. Just getting power to this today, I am going to chuck up uh, a small bit of wood, reposition the camera, and see if we can't turn this down to fit this guy, which will be part of video number two, probably, or three at this stage. Okay, so I'll reposition the camera, and then we can have a look at me actually doing some work on this lathe for once. Well, I think that's all for today. That actually works remarkably well. Um, so, in part two of this video, I will continue to turn this up and make it fit this guy and actually get this attached and see if we can't do some metal form or metal work uh, next. Uh, and there's many other videos to come, hopefully. Um, I'll work out a tensioner for this. So I can actually tension, as I was saying, both of these need to go like this. Uh, to provide tension on this thing, because as you notice, this actually stalled out several times during this during this little test of the of the device. Um, so anyway, without further ado, I'm going to leave the video here. If you liked the video, please do the usual shenanigans of liking and subscribing. Uh, if you wish to contribute to the channel, there is a PayPal link in the description below. Uh, that is set up so you can donate one Australian cent to whatever the heck you feel like. If you want to see these, if you want to see these projects progress a little bit faster than they already are. Um, without further ado, I am Nick from Fibotech, and